we've turned off to take a bit of a shortcut to get to Alice Springs onto uh, Ernest Gillies Road. We had a chat to a few locals just to see what it was like. Um, they said it just got graded a, a week or so ago, um, but there was also some soft bits as well, so just to be, to be careful. But this is the first time taking the van and the car for 100 k's on corrugation, slash sand. Dave's nervous? Ah, it's all ah. good. <laughs> Feels good. Just doing 80 k's. Um, seen how the conditions have. Um, this looks alright, this part. Put rocks down in parts. Some parts are uh, a bit bull dusty so far. We're only about 5 k's in. Um, but yeah, so far so good. There's no such thing as corrugation so far. So there we go, another 50 k's. Yeah. until we got a flat tire and it was supposed to be a shortcut and then two hours later we are getting off the road um, it is what it is I had fun changing a tire Dave maybe not so much you didn't change it <laughs> I helped I helped a lot I lifted it I helped with the pressure Yes, so the roads the road's actually not that bad. No. It's a bit corrugated, a few sandy parts and whatnot. It's just more the fact we still got the original tires on the car. Well now I have to beep that out. Can you not swear? That's <laughs> <laughs> not a swear word. Yes it is. <laughs> now I've got to find a special noise to beep over the top of you. So yeah, Dave's not happy with the tyres now, but it's all part of the adventure, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little spew and I didn't set up the time lapse, I'm all changing the tyre, but I didn't want to push my luck with Dave um, to stop quickly to set it all up, but it is what it is. If you plan on going around Australia, bring an air compressor. <laughs> You'll need it sooner or later, whether it's just to pump up the tyres or whatnot. We've got an onboard uh, air compressor, ARB, Joule. Uh, we dropped our tyres to 32 on the rear, and I think it was 29 on the front, just because it's a bit more load on the, on the rear. Um, so now we're just uh, airing back up to uh, our normal tyre pressure, uh, about 40 psi for us. Uh, obviously conditions, everything will change, um, but yeah. Alright, so we're here at Big Four Alice Springs. Uh, just going to give you a quick um, tour of the caravan park. Uh, it's called Big Four um, McDonald Rangers, I think. McDonald Rangers, yes. Um, in Alice Springs here, so it's a little bit out of town. I'm going to say a little bit, probably three to five k's, mm. um, which is what you want here in Alice Springs anyway. Um, just get out of town, um, obviously because of the crime and stuff. 
great caravan park. Uh, just give you a quick look at our site. So they're big. They're all big sites here. You can fit your van. You've got a nice concrete slab and plenty of room for your car. Um, we just happen to be right across the road from <laughs> the, dump point. the toilet box, <laughs> which is really convenient. Um, heaps of amenities here we found. So there's literally a amenities block here, then there's a park, then there's another amenities block. Um, the sun is just going down, so we get a bit of glare here. Heaps of camp kitchens, which I'll just show you. So there's a big camp kitchen there, barbecues, microwaves, fridges, all that sort of stuff. There's actually another toilet block down the far end there, and another one there on that side. So this is one of two parks. Let me try to get out of the sun here and go to the other side, I think. Alright, so this is once again one of the other parks near our caravan. Table tennis table, camp kitchen. Bit of hopscotch and another amenities block. Uh, so just down the far end of the caravan park. Big jumping pillow over there. Smaller jumping pillow here for the kids. Great shaded area, very colourful from hot sun in summer. It's also another playground next to it so plenty for the facilities for the kids so when you when you arrive you get this little man on the scooter <laughs> who takes you to your site gives you all the info lets you know that there's uh free pancakes on a sunday um whatever other so that's the kango and the emu shed so all sorts of activities we've got games rooms all that sort of stuff um, it is a massive caravan park, mm. by the way. Um, we stopped here for dinner last night. This is just across from the shed. Flavours of India. Had buttered chicken. Uh, Jen, how'd we go on that? Delicious. Beef vindaloo for me. With some buttered chicken on the side as well, because I couldn't decide. Um, but no, it was spot on. And it's good, because they've got the food trucks here, so you don't have to leave after dark, which is not recommended here. Um, so we've... Um, done well they got the pancake one here yeah as well. also got a pancake which is open nightly uh, milkshakes pancakes ice cream yeah. that sort of thing fuel pumps if you want fuel you don't want to go into town now this is where the kids have spent most of their afternoons the water slide <laughs> awesome water slide the none of the pools are heated but uh, the water is quite nice um, there's three different pools. Four. Three. I thought it was four. Three, 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 three pools and a little kids' pool. Um, but the water slide is obviously key for the kids and big kids alike, <laughs> like myself. Uh, so I think last thing is the caravan or the big four at the moment had a pay five stay seven deal. Uh, which was awesome. So we got our batteries sorted, put those in, windscreen fixed, tyre fixed, uh, and we're back on the road in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? Um, I think I was checked it before, but I've forgotten already. I think it was 384 for the seven nights, which was actually only, which would be five nights, paying for five. So yeah, I did, I did calculate that, how much it was a night, but I've forgotten. Just, just over 50. So, um, we're happy with that. Or just over 60. So, yeah. For what we get, spot on. Happy Mother's Day. And happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. Guess who's got a double celebration tomorrow? Today, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've gone all out and I've made the caravan park um, put on pancakes for the whole for Jennifer. Um, so there we're headed over to get some pancakes um, for all the mothers out there. Yeah, yeah, you did that. Yes, I organised it all. <laughs> So 
because this is the pancake line. <laughs> pancake record for men, 13, women, 9, 11 pancakes for 13 year old girl. And you can eat as many as possible. We can? How many yep. pancakes are you going to eat? Uh, I might have maybe four. Four. Uh, you know your cardigan's on inside out. <laughs> We're having a big pancake too. Are they big? Yeah. Look at the chef go. Oh, they must cook fast in driving through the West McDonald Ranges. First stop today is Ormiston. Ormiston Gorge. Ormiston Gorge. We're two minutes out. It's just lots of beautiful rolling hills as we're driving in here for about just over an hour. 130 k's from our caravan park. We're at Ormiston Gorge. There's several walks you can do here. There's a waterhole walk, ghost gum lookout, ghost gum walk, pond, pound walk, sorry, Bowman's Gap, Mount Giles, and the Lapa Pinta Trail. Lara Pinta. Which is all of them start to the start. Right. So, yes. 300 metres, 1.2, 2.5. May just get bigger and bigger. I think we're just going to do the water hole. Five minutes, one minute. Mom. Starting the five minute walk down to the water hole. How are you doing? This is it is a path. Cool. We'll take you start taking your shoes and socks off then. Beautiful view here. Almost in the gorge. Sure. Look at it at the very top of there. Yeah, you can look out at the top there. Beautiful backdrop, scenery. Looks like it's a sandy beach here, but it's all just little crushed up rocks. But it's still quite pleasant. Beautiful spot. Absolutely beautiful. This is how we go hiking these days when we're looking for water holes. <laughs> Bathers. And hiking boots. Isn't that right, Rubes? Sure. Okay, she's got a bluey top and a bluey Bluey bathers, with bluey t shirt, and hiking boots. And a hat. Yeah. And they're all blue. And the typical Aussies hiking boots thongs. <laughs> Alright. Um, why are you wearing thongs? Um, we got Serpentine Gorge. It was a three or five kilometre dirt road 
to go down here, so you know. Just in the car park. Number one lock. George, just having a read here. No swimming, but we can go have a look at one point. Three to the gorge. It's a haven for wildlife. Bit of a rougher walk this one. I took my my boots off. I got my thongs on. But still, it's okay. Only one K. I'll survive. Here is Serpentine Gorge. Again, such a beautiful scenery. Not allowed to swim in this one. It's a bit dangerous, apparently. It's very cool. Alright, here we are at Illery Creek Big Hole. So they've got camping here. Um, a few different walks, and what I'm guessing is just a big swimming hole. Just there. Looks cool. Well, this one be a top um, cold. I don't know, probably. It looks a bit deeper than the other one, so. And these are just explaining the shape of the landscape. Walking up to the Hillary Creek hole. Shoot fly. Looks huge. Slow poke, so slow poke bluey behind us. Okay. Daydreaming. Daydreaming, yeah. Yes! Come on. Come on. Look at it, Dylan. Oh my gosh. Looks amazing. <laughs> Cold? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, I can't feel my legs. Is it nice? No. Where are you? Stop coming in. I mean, maybe at ankles. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Claire! <laughs> Alright, so we're just finishing up at Ellery Gorge. Um, it was brilliant. So our first one, as you know, was Ormiston, um, which is where you could swim as well. And then we um, did a little pit stop at Orca, or Orca Pits, or however you pronounce that. Um, wasn't that awesome. Um, you could give that a skip. And then we went to Serpentine. Um, you can't swim there. And then you've got um, here. So out of the two swimming holes, um, I I don't know which one I like best. I think I think Ormiston actually because it's really sandy. Um, Dave, uh, I like Ellery. Ellery Creek is I think it's a bit better view. Uh, yeah. The swimming uh, is a lot more. There's a lot more water. Um, just feels you know a bit more relaxing. So if we started at Ormiston Gorge, because it's furthest away from Alice Springs and worked our way back towards Alice Springs, um, that was just best for us. So it's late afternoon now. Um, so we just finished up and then we're close to Alice to get back home. Yeah, it was nice. We had a couple of hours here at Ellery, which was actually good. It was the hottest part of the day. Um, it was just absolutely freezing because it was a lot deeper, so. Yeah, because you've got the gorge on mm. both sides, um, the water is not very warm at all. Um, the kids had a lot of fun. Yeah, they had a lot of fun. There's sand, there's mud they can play in. Mm. Um, you can keep clean. Um, kids chose not to, of course, mm -hmm. kids being kids. And they're both easy walks. They're both paved walks as well. Yeah, about 100 metres. There's toilets at both uh, and Drinking you can water. free camp at both as well. 
Um, I don't know, I think if I was to pick a free camp, I'd probably come here. Mm. Just the campsites look a lot nicer. They're a lot bigger. They're sort of separate from everyone, where there's at Ormiston, everyone was just sort of together. There's yeah, just one big, yeah, you know, like a big car park area. So if you're thinking about free camping and you're coming um, from Kings Canyon or something this way, um, I'd camp here personally. Mm. Yeah. Know, that's just my opinion. Both are good though. Um, yeah, both are good. There's a few yeah. other camping spots along the way as mm. well. Um, but here's a good one if you wanted to stop for the day and stay the night. Yeah. It's nice and relaxing. Cool. All right, so we're here at Emily's Gap, otherwise known as Antwerp. Um, just going to check out some Aboriginal art. Beautiful little gully here. Sandy base, and uh, yeah, let's go find some original art and check it out. Hello, Wasp. So, just some easy four wheel driving up to a lookout in the East McDonald Ranges. I wanted to put it outside. Maybe put my window up. Just tell them to drop the tire pressure. Yeah, got the tire pressures down. Um. Why? I get a puncher. I like changing tyres. Yeah. Not particularly. <laughs> Top. Wobbly. Up the top of the lookout. Three sixty views of East Macdonald Ranges. Today we're at Alice Springs Reptile Centre. So it's right in the middle of town. All right, where all the shops are. So he wants to hold a crocodile? No, a turtle! Oh, a turtle! I thought you said crocodile. Look at that girl in front of her head and she's holding it on the frog. Hello, Mr. Lizzie. Story. So he puts his head up because his head's so black. Or it, it, the sun goes onto his head and it gets <coughs> all the hotness all the way through his body instead of getting his whole body out of the hole. Wow, well, what sort of snake is it? It's a black headed python. Black headed python. Gee, you're a good girl. She can tell this. stories, can't Ooh. she? Look, he's coming out. He's coming out of the water. Whoa. He's shedding his skin. That's why he's in the water. Making it all soft. Hmm. What are you looking for? Yeah, I mean, he's going to go get some sun now that he's all wet. Go look in the window. Watching in the window.
Yeah. yeah. There you go. Get a nice spot in the sun. Saltwater croc. Chilling in the pool. What have you got? Thorny devils. One, two. Oh, it's different colour ones. Three. And four. Now there's one moving. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. What else? Make sure you don't touch them. Look at them all. They all blend in. Well, they're hard to find. Yeah, it's very hard to find. Six! I've got a bit of video of one. Yeah, they're like... Uh, mm -hmm. You wouldn't like to step on one, would you? They walk like a guan. Like Four, five. Are you happy? Are you got enough sun there? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> I think you need a sunnier spot, babe. Say to them. Nothing in that one. It's empty that one. They look like dinosaurs, just miniaturised. <laughs> Usually they're more in season when there's a lot of crickets and things like that walking around. So that's usually around springtime sort of thing. <laughs> he touches little spikes. They actually so, oh, soft. That is a sheep. It's a baby. Now, when it's uh, like I said, they could change colour under their beard and the tip of their tail to a bit dark colour. They do actually go from grey to brighter colours, uh, depending oh, on yeah. how hot it is outside, how much sunlight they're getting. If they're not getting a lot, they'll be a more grey colour. If they're getting a lot of it, they'll be a yellowy or orangey colour, depending on the specific beard dragon. Uh, she's got a bit of both in her. <laughs> See that bit around the face, it's a bit yellow. Hold it. Can I have a hold? Or do you want a pat? You don't have to. It's okay. You have a joke? Just like that, and she'll just hold on. Look at that, Ruby. Like I said, she doesn't do much. She's just a warm treater. She's pretty happy there. See? Look, Ruby's done it. Frozen like a statue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these yeah. ones, you these or um, So they don't necessarily build a relationship. They will get more comfortable around humans because they realise they're not really a threat. Um, but that's about it. So the ones we use for shows all the time are obviously just fine. And we also choose more classic ones as well to go for shows. So what we'll do? Uh, are you doing that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, so we'll tend to sell, like in the clutch, we'll tend to eat more docile ones and sell off the ones that are a bit more <laughs> ag aggro, um, essentially. Frisky. Yeah. Because with these guys, they do tend to run away more than they tend to bite. So in the wild, if you pour them on, it'll bite. But if you're if you're just running off or something, you will usually run away. Unless you bother it a lot, and it'll usually run away. <laughs> Do they have any natural cats and dogs and foxes? Okay, you can pass her. Um, so birds, birds eat them a lot, so a lot of kites and things like that Spiders. always Spiders. come down and whisk them away. Um, worm vipers as well can do it because they eat reptiles okay. as well, uh, and big goannas can eat them too. You want to have a quick little pat before he takes them? Do you want to pat? I can hold her like this if you want. You can just have a little pat of the tail. There we yeah, go. Good girl. Good job. Oh, so blue. Now, something else you notice if you're from another part of Australia and you've seen a blue tongue before, the blue tongues down south. If you're in Victoria or New South Wales, like they might be a bit darker in colour yeah, than this one. That's what I was going to say, the stripes so, are a bit more prominent. Down south, they're pretty dark, and up north, they're pretty light. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is basically so, sunlight. Yeah. So, up north, you get a lot of sunlight. They want to actually reflect some of that heat so they don't get too hot, like above 40 degrees or so. Um, down south, it's really cold nearly all the time, and they just want to absorb as much of the sunlight as possible. No. So, basically, darker in colour down south, 
lighter in colour up north. Were you having a hole? No. No? Okay, that's all. Oh, got his turn. That's alright. <laughs> it feels like a shell. Yeah. Feels kind of smooth. Yeah. Blue, you want to try this time? I think it was different to the other one. Yeah, this one. Totally different. Doesn't have any spiky bits on it. Totally 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 yeah. Do you want me to turn him around so you can actually see him better? Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. And he's turned around and looking at you anyway. It's okay. If you want him to... Yeah, good girl. It's a nervous laugh. It is a nervous laugh. <laughs> good girl. Good job. Good. He's just having a smell as well. You might have got a little kiss from him. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a little scratch. It's not this way and this way with that forked tongue. So they can actually use that forked tongue to pinpoint the direction and their distance of their prey. So it's actually quite a strong mechanism they have there. You don't have to. That's okay. <laughs> exactly. I describe it as dense is usually the word I use. Wow. So there's a lot in the one section sort of thing. Oh, yeah. um, I hope your shoulders just can bring your arm out here a bit. That'll make the best photo usually. Cool. <laughs> Oh, no worries. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. You want to go put the tail around you? Whoops. You can, do you want to put the end around you? I'm going to put it with your hand yep, I don't want the head to no, no, the, 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 head, the head can be over here, yeah. Okay. And I'll be nearby as well. Just. <laughs> they look so terrified. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> good job. Claire, you want to touch? Oh, good girl. There we go. Oh, uh, that's for those disarticulated jaws I was talking about. So we just have a bit of stretchy too? skin that sort of folds in. Do you want to put around you like Ruby? So that you can open his mouth. Just over here. You ain't going to have all? Today we are at Alice Springs Desert Park. We've just walked in. It was $100 for a family saver pass for two adults and two kids. Four kids though. It is up to four kids, that's right. So two adults and four kids for 100 bucks. It's pretty good. At the moment the cafe is closed, but you can bring your own lunch in. We've got little wristbands to go out and grab our lunch. Yes, darling. <gasps> wow. You're on the snake. He doesn't care. Do you remember? Do you remember what he was called? Devil. Close. Thorny devil. Thorny. Thorny devil. Thorny devil. That's his name. We saw them yesterday, didn't we? This one looks like a little bilby. So we got distracted with the park before we do anything else. So what did she say to do, Dave? So head in here, see the dingoes, they've got the emu talk now up here, and yeah. then head to the amphitheatre and do the bird show. Bird what time show. is the emus? Yeah, free hike for the day. Now we're going to chat about this prop. You guys know what this may represent? Emu egg, correct? Avocado has been suggested confidently in the past. <laughs> but, uh, this is our version of an emu egg. So emus lay the second biggest egg in the world. Could weigh 
500 grams. Uh, that is 14 chicken eggs. So that is a lot of food if you can find one and if you live in the desert. Now there's one particular species that has an interesting relationship with an emu egg. It's this noisy chap. He is a black breasted buzzard. Now he loves eggs and he loves nestlings. Usually he just picks up an egg with his feet and smashes it. But for this egg, you need some backup. So, this is interesting for a few reasons. This is why he well done that. This is not a circus trick. That's not something we could have taught him. His parents wouldn't have taught him either. And it's completely instinctive. So tool use in the animal world is supposed to be a good indicator for how intelligent you are. I'm not sure we can call that intelligence because he didn't have to learn it. So fascinating that behavior can be completely built in like that and uh, helps him survive. Now he's quite happy on the ground. He looks less majestic down here. He looks a bit like a chook, but uh, he's got long legs and a short tail. So he's quite happy running around. He can even outrun a slow bearded dragon on a cool spring morning. And uh, usually you see them quite high uh, patrolling over outback woodlands. Now they've got big white window patches in their wings. Good way to identify them. It's because they might try and steal his food. But just watch him closely. He'll uh, tuck his wings in. Look at that. So he's only doing 40, 50 kilometers an hour there. Um, we can tell because put GPS or tag on his tail. But uh, yeah, he, looks like, he looks like a little dragon. He does not want those kites to steal his food. And they have stole his food uh, in the past. So the feathers are up, the wings are out. He wants to look dangerous to those kites. So he is big for a bird, but he's small for a wedge-tailed eagle. He's two and a half kilos. The Centralian wedgies are not massive. The further south you go, the bigger the eagles get. And uh, down in Tasmania, a big female eagle could be five kilos. So double him. So very, very big, and uh, the males are smaller, more agile. They can take out things like rabbits, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, the colder it is, the bigger the animals are in general. So they do suffer uh, from being hit by cars a fair bit. Please slow down if you see eagles in front of you. They can eat up to a quarter of their own body weight in one sitting. So you imagine trying to move quickly after doing that. It doesn't always happen. They try and slow right down when you see them. Uh, an eagle three windscreen is definitely a lose-lose situation. So uh, try and slow down. You'll be helping out a little bit. So guys, that's about it for this morning. I'm going to pop him back in his aviary. We are doing photos with one of our eagles and one of our barn owls after the show if you're interested. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll come back out and chat to you if you want to do that in a second. Other than that, guys, have a nice day on park. Thanks very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Nothing on her head. If you had a pat her, it'd be here or here, but nothing at the head. So let her come and smell you. Oh, well done. Oh, I licked your hand. Yep. Now you can give her a pat on the side. There you go. Now over here. Same thing again. Just remember Claire, not to touch her head. Oh, well done. Claire, stand back, please. Very friendly, isn't he? Oh, it's sniffing so this, is, this is she, this is Marla. She? Yeah. Marla. This is Marla. <laughs> She's like, can I have some yeah, sausage give instead? Give me a treat. So you, can, you can just come <laughs> yeah. in slowly. I've been very come good. Come in slowly, that's it. That's oh, it. Darling. And then you should be able to give her a she pat down injured? on the shoulder. Ah, uh, she's had a couple of scraps over the years okay. on her nose there, yep. Oh, good yep. girl. Alright, now I'm going to move her off and Digger will come and uh, he'll do the same thing. Yes. What is that? Oh. What is that? What is that? Grasshopper. They're no. bugs. Like a butchie. <laughs> They're actually alive. Look at him. Loving it. <laughs> Like a butchy boy. I saw that when you put it down, that these things are actually alive. See, they're alive. There's a scorpion. There's a scorpion.
There's a desert scorpion. There's a bug there. Mm -hmm. What's that? A barking bug? spider. Do you reckon it barks? Yeah, they make a barking sound. Sometimes called the whistling spider. Oh, that one's here. There's another spider. Why is that moving? That's a desert wolf spider. Yep, yeah, it is. It's a mouse. There it is. Oh, there's two. There's two. There's two. I don't like the light. That's why we're running away. There's two. There's two. Three. Four. Nope, they're too fast for the GoPro. They can jump. There's one eating. Bye. <laughs> There's one eating there. Shoes on. So after the desert park, that was our last day here in Alice Springs. Um, our seven days has been super fun. Um, I'll leave some photos up here of just some of our memories. We've got the nocturnal house here, some animals, um, our eagle that we saw, the emus, some owls, and then just going back through our gorges um, and our lookouts. So definitely come in and check out the Red Centre. Next we'll be heading off um, up north, so keep watching. <laughs>